This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm in Miami. It's the first time it's not been thunderstorms and lightning. I'm joined by Francis Warren. Nice to actually be outside in Miami. It is, mate. Yeah, we've been coped up all week, haven't we? So, um, nice to get out and try and get a little bit of sunshine. Have you uh, got over Donking speech yet? It's still ringing in my ears. <laughs> ah, listen. Oh, you, could, you know, you could sit there and listen to him all day. Um, you know, he's earned that right. It's his show. Um, and it's not the first time he's done it, <laughs> I think. Jeff Powell was telling me they used to take bets when he had fights on in Vegas uh, how long the, uh, the press conference was la would last. I think the record was just, just shy of five hours, so we got off lightly yesterday. <laughs> Both uh, exchanges that we've seen between Trevor and Daniel have been quite heated. It's good to see Daniel coming out a bit of a shell this week. Obviously, normally a quiet character, but he's been quite vocal this week, Daniel. Yeah, I thought at the, um, at the presser, I mean, you know, I mean, they made a lot of noise, didn't they? Brian's team and uh, Shane McGuigan got it right. You know, Daniel, Daniel's got bite, they've got bark. And, uh, but today, I think he was <laughs> he pissed off Daniel. I mean, pulling out a pack of tampons, that, um, you know, and, and dancing like, like a child. I thought it was just pathetic. Um, but, you know, it, it just, I think it shows the mentality of both guys. Daniel's focused and determined and, and rightly so, a bit pissed off and, and insulted today. And, and he's dancing around like a, like a loon. So... Um, I really think Daniel's going to put something in pretty special on Saturday. Uh, I don't think this guy's in his league at all. And, um, you know, I think I don't know if it's adding fuel to the fire, but it's definitely confirming the fact that, this, you know, Daniel's not going to take any prisoners on Saturday. And, um, you know, I think Trevor Brown will be dancing his way back to the dressing room pretty sharpish. Francis, is this a real world title or not? It's a version of a world title. Um, I think it helps that there is this available to, to get people into a position that the winner of the unification fights that are coming up, um, everyone knows where they are and who they've got to fight next. Um, Joe Joyce is in a similar position um, with the WBO. Um, but, you know, this, it, it keeps the titles moving because if you've got two guys tying three belts up for the best part of a year and a bit, then obviously the, the division stagnates slightly. So it gives people the opportunity to to get, a, you know, get experience of fighting for a version of a world title um, and it also lets everyone know what, what the next what the next positions are and, and you, know, the, the, you know the next next moves that the, 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 the governing bodies will be making sanctioning bodies will be making um, Joe's in line for the winner of Usyk and Joshua and so will Daniel be if he wins on Saturday so you know it's a, well sorry I should say there's another eliminator going on isn't there between um, Huey Fury and Michael Hunter so got that and then uh, yeah and then we got, um, you know, we get the winner. In terms of a heavyweight scene, can you remember a stronger time for Queensbury specifically and individually? You've got obviously, as I said, Daniel and Joe in very strong positions. We don't know what's going on with Tyson Fury, but in terms of Daniel and Joe in a very strong position in the heavyweight division. No, I think in terms of heavyweights, it's probably the best it's ever been for us. Um, you know, and, and massive, massive credit to both guys. And obviously, you know, we've done everything in our power to make sure that they're in, in very strong positions. Um, you know, Joe Joyce is number one with a WBO. Daniel's obviously challenging for the, you know, the WBA, WBA world title on, um, on Saturday. And, um, yeah, I think we're in a great position. Really strong position. OK. Uh, your dad and uh, Don King obviously go a long <laughs> way back. Uh, Don made some positive references about your dad and a couple of ones where he was like, your dad's still in hiding, etc. I think it was a bit tongue-in-cheek. What's your dad said about Don, and what did you make of Don's comments about your dad on uh, Tuesday? Listen, Don was talking about the war in Ukraine, rape, shootings, um, what else did he go? All sorts of things. So, yeah, the Queen's Jubilee. <laughs> the Queen's Jambalaya. Um, he said, Don and my dad go a long way back. Um, they've had well-documented good times and well-documented bad times. Um, so it's probably quite fitting that he said some positive things and some negative things. Um, listen, he's a, he's, a, he's, a very, he's a veteran of the game. It's his show. He had the microphone so he could say what he wants. All I know is that we're in a really strong position on Saturday and uh, we'll, let our, we'll let our guy do the talking on Saturday night. And by the way, this will be, um, this will be the second time that my dad's brought, uh, had a, a heavyweight world title fight against, um, against one of Don King's fighters. Obviously, Bruno... Uh, beat Oliver McCall at, um, at Wembley in the mid 90s. So hopefully we'll make it 2 0 on Saturday. Well, for people back home in the UK, it's brilliant because they'll get 11.30, the ring walks, yeah, prime time, um, yeah, 6 o'clock here. So 
should expect a big number of people watching it back home on BT Sport. Yeah, I thought so. I hope everyone gets, you know, gets, uh, continues to watch from the end of the show in Telford. We've got a really strong card there. Obviously, Mark Leach and, and Liam Davies. It's a fantastic fight. I'm, um, look at, um, you know, I'll be obviously watching that one before, um, before we head over to the arena. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we hold the audience and people will tune in and support Daniel. Francis, as you said, you're on an away show. Everything gone smoothly in terms of Daniel and Don King and the promotion side of things. Everything run smoothly this week. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. It's kind of been a bit of a funny one. We're in a very strange hotel that's got nothing around it. So it's been a lot of waiting around. I feel like we're in purgatory, to be honest, waiting around just for things to happen. So it's, um, no, it's been a good week. I know Daniel's enjoyed himself. He seems very relaxed, very chilled out. And that's the most important thing. Um, you know, if anything hasn't run smoothly, Daniel doesn't know about it. Put it that way. You know, we've we've, we've looked after him. Um, you know, Shane and his team have done a terrific job as well. And um, you know, just just you know, it's, it's, I just think it's a great opportunity for him. I'm so happy for him that he, he's he's got this this moment to shine. And I don't think he could have probably picked a better opponent to go and look great against. And uh, I think it'd be quite devastating on Saturday. We know how much of a setback that fight against Joe Joyce was, but Daniel's come back well. But what would a win do for him coming to America, uh, title on the line against Trevor Bryant? How much confidence will that instill in him moving forward on the world scene? Well, of course it's going to you know, instill confidence in him because he's, you know, he's, there, he's, he's launched himself into the elite. Um, and you know, he, he would probably fancy his chances against most of the, uh, the, the other heavyweights in the division. Um, obviously, the, the fight against Joe, um, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't quite perform on the night, and, and Joe, Joe boxed fantastically well, and the best, you know, the best man won on the night. And you know, speaking to Daniel this week, he's obviously, you know, it's one of the things he, he, he wants to, he thinks he can rectify. Um, so, what a great fight down the line that will be, the rematch. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, t in terms of a confidence builder, coming to the states and going home with the world title, I don't think you can, I don't think you can beat that. Well, it's difficult uh, to speak to your dad or yourself and not bring up Tyson Fury. Don King reckons he's going to bring Tyson Fury out of retirement. Yeah, he's also going to sign Daniel. But he say, you'll end up with me, you'll end up with me. Um, let's all keep everything crossed that Tyson Fury doesn't retire. Oh, is it? He comes back. As a, but listen, there's it, not much point in commenting on it because Tyson Fury is his own man and Tyson Fury will do what Tyson Fury wants, him to, wants to do. Um, and I don't want to speak out of turn, to be honest, because he's, he's, you know, he's, a man, he's the man and uh, you know, he'll make his own decisions. Well, it's been an interesting week to say the least. I'm sure there'll be a few more fun and games come fight night. But yeah, tune in BT Sport, uh, 11.30 ring walks, as I said, Dubois going for that title against Mr. Bryant. Francis Warren, thank you very much for your thank time you and uh, we'll speak soon, all right? Thank, I want to thank all the guys from UK Press coming out, you know, yourself and uh, Wally and Deck, you know, it's been, uh, you know, and Jeff Powell have had some great, great support for him and um, you know, hope we're getting plenty of coverage back at home. Obviously BT Sport as well broadcasting the fight. As the actually teams like they're the main broadcaster you know, live live from the States. You know, it, but you know, thank you to all, all the guys and all the support. No, thanks for having us and you're right, it does feel like a UK fight. Welcome Team Everlast to the Team Everlast Fitness Day. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.